good morning, afternoon, or evening. How y'all doing today? Welcome back to Mr. Morrow's Honors Geometry class. Today we are going to learn about the altitude on hypotenuse theorem. And this theorem deals with three triangles, three right triangles to be accurate, within one triangle. It's, uh, it's pretty cool and it's, it's uh, easy, but a lot of times people see it very difficultly, so I'm going to do my best to make this pretty easy for you. All right, when we're talking about the altitude on hypotenuse theorem, if you look here, we really have three triangles, three right triangles. We have triangle A, C, B, which we'll call the large triangle because it is the largest of the three. Then we have triangle C, B, D. Okay, and that is the middle triangle because it is the middle size. And then we have triangle A, C, D. And this is the small triangle. So you're always going to have a large, a medium, and a small triangle within this type of setup and or figure. And all of these triangles are similar, and they're going to be similar because of angle, angle. Okay? We're not going to go through the proof of it. Um, hopefully you see it. If you don't see it, come by, and I will explain it to you later. Let me pause this for a second. All right, sorry about that little interruption there. Okay, so let's take a look at how we can relate all of these similarities. Right now, this is going to seem a little bit confusing, but just bear with me, please. And I promise you that once we do the examples, hopefully, it's all going to make sense. When we're trying to find a missing side, okay, within these triangles, the key here is to make the shared side known. You're looking for the shared side of two particular triangles when you're looking for missing sides. Okay? They're going to give you usually three values. And you're going to look for the shared side. That shared side, if you remember the means extremes theorem, will be the extremes. They have to be across from each other. So, when we're looking at triangle ABC, which is our large triangle here, and triangle ACD, which is our small triangle here. When I shaded both of them in colors there, in different colors, you may want to do that for yourselves. Which side here is shared by both of these triangles? AC, very good. So if you can see, AC is going to be across from each other. AC is the shared side. So now, how does this work though, Moro? Well, check it out. AB is the long side, or in this case, the hypotenuse of the large triangle, correct? So AB to AC can be related to AC to AD. Now, you may say, why? Well, what other side can it be related to? There's nothing. I can't relate CD to any side of ABC, can I? I can't relate CB to any side of ACD, can I? So the only things that I can relate are the long side here of AB to AD. And what do I use to gel those together? The extremes of the shared side AC. So this is what we're trying to look for. We're trying to find the shared side, and then we've got to ask ourselves, okay, what other sides can correspond between these two triangles? When we're looking at triangle ACD, again, the smaller triangle, and triangle CBD, first thing we want to find, which is the shared side here. Yes, sir. CD. 
Very good. Now, if I take AD to AC, um, to CD, sorry, AD to CD, CD is my extreme, that's the shared side, that will be equal to CD to DB. Why? Well, wasn't this the bottom portion of the small triangle? Doesn't that relate to the bottom portion of the middle triangle? What other proportion could I have set up here? I could have set up AC to CD. That would be the hypotenuse of triangle ACD. And set that equal to CD, the shared side, over, which is the hypotenuse of CBD, CB. So that makes sense here, guys. So a shared side is always across from each other. And then you've got to look for the other potential sides that can be corresponding to each other, being that they're all similar. You with me here so far? I promise it's going to make a lot more sense when we put values here. And then last but not least, if I have ABC, okay, the large triangle, and I set that similar to CBD, this green guy here, which is the shared side here, CB. So now let's look at what possible sides could correspond here. There's only one in this particular case. In this case, AB, which is the large side of triangle ABC, can be set over CB, which is our shared side, and that will equal CB, the shared side, over DB, which is the bottom side of triangle CBD. There are no other possible corresponding sides here for the middle and the large triangle. The only situation that we have two possible sets of proportions are when you're dealing with the small and the middle. But if you're dealing with the small and the large and the large and the middle, you only have one side other than the shared side that can correspond. You guys with me here? Yes, sir. Not multiple, just two. This guy and this guy. And you will use it depending on what they give you. Either one will not give you the same. It depends on what they give you. Okay, my man? Thank you for asking, sir. Okay, so now, all of this is explained in what's called the altitude hypotenuse theorem, which states that if an altitude is drawn to the hypotenuse of a triangle, then the following will occur. Number one, first of all, all three triangles will be congruent. So triangle ADC, which is the middle, is similar to triangle BDC, which is the small, which is similar to ACB, which is the large. So, when I drop a, a hypot uh, an altitude from a hypotenuse, I'm creating three triangles. And those three triangles, those three right triangles, rather, I'm sorry, are for sure 100% going to be similar. <clears throat> and number two, look how I labeled the X, the Y, the A, the B, and the C. The proportion of x to y, x to h equals h to y. When I go ahead and cross multiply that, h squared will equal x times y. What on earth am I saying here? Well, let's think about this. If I'm talking about the middle and the and the small, x to h, which is my shared side, will equal h to y. How come? because X and Y are corresponding sides of those two similar triangles, okay? Y to A, yes, sir. Well, X to H, 
must be equal to h to y. Aren't x and y corresponding sides? Isn't h the shared side? So x to h must equal h to y. And then when I cross multiply, you just got basic algebra there. Does that make sense, son? That's exactly right. That is a review of what we just finished doing. Correct, sir. If I take y to a, that must equal a to c. In that case, I'm taking the small and the large. I'm taking the corresponding sides of the small and the large, which in this case are y and c, and I'm using the shared side A as my extremes. And last but not least, if I take X to B, that will equal B to C. In that case, I'm taking the large in the middle, and I'm using the shared side of the large in the middle, which is B. So everything that I just put here is the exact review, but in theorem form, okay, set up in mathematical situation of what we just did in the first slide. And that's it. This is the lesson, okay? So now, I'm going to give you a few seconds. I see some people writing. Thank you. And then we're going to go ahead and apply it. It's really not that bad. The key here find that shared side determine which triangles are being used to find that shared side which corresponding sides of those similar triangles can be used as well those that's what you're looking for you guys ready all right so number one i want to find x okay first things first what two triangles do you think I'm using here? The small and the medium. I'm using this guy and this guy. What is the shared side, my brothers? X, right? CD. You with me there? So, 3 to X must equal X to 9. Why? Because doesn't 3 correspond to 9 when we're talking about the small and the middle triangle? Does that make sense? So now let's go ahead and cross multiply and solve. So x squared will equal 27. Square root of 27. x equals, that's 9 times 3, so 3 square root of 3. And you're done. It's that simple. But you got to find the shared side. That's it. That's your answer, my brother. I saw a hand here. Okay. Yes, sir? Oh, okay, I thought you said. Does that make sense? Don't be a hero here, though, guys. Find the shared side. From there, it's a lot easier for you to determine which triangles we're working with. You knew that if that X here is a shared side, so are you using the large triangle? No, it's impossible. That's not part of the large triangle. So the good news, whenever it's the altitude, it's always the, the small and the middle triangles that you're using. May I continue? Okay. Number two, take a look here. What's the shared side here? AC, very good, son. So if AC is the shared side, which two triangles am I working with? Beautiful, guys, beautiful. The small and the large. Now, in this case, be careful. What would my uh, proportion be? Yes, sir, my brother. 3 over x equals x over 12. That's the kicker there. Since I'm using the large triangle, AB here corresponds to AD. So AD is 3, AB is 3 plus 9, which is 12. Let's go ahead and cross multiply. X squared equals 36. X equals 6. It's 
that simple. It's not that bad, actually, is it? The key here is what I always try to emphasize is the shared side. If you find that shared side, life becomes a lot easier, in my opinion. May I continue, gentlemen? Okay, thank you. Example three, okay. This is a good one. What's the shared side here? AC. Very good. Who am I using? What two triangles? The small and the large. Absolutely, guys. Fantastic. So what's my proportion here, gentlemen? X over 10 equals 10 over X plus 21. Very good. Let's cross multiply here, gentlemen. This is going to be X squared. Remember, you have to distribute this X. Plus 21X equals 100. Subtract the 100 of both sides because I want to create a trinomial in order for me to solve this. Now, you can use the quadratic formula if you want. Or you can factor. At least try to factor. So let's try our setup here. I got X and X. What times what, guys, is equal to negative 100, but what I have to get is positive 21. Yes, sir. 25 and negative 4. Fantastic, son. Fantastic. So X will equal negative 25 or 4. Can X equal negative 25 here? No, because I can't have a negative side. So X equals 4. X is 4. Yes, sir. I saw a hand up here. Yes, sir, my brother. Okay, you found the shared side. Okay, let's think about it. The question here was, how did I find the shared side? That, that's a brilliant question. I really thank you. Okay, let's go through all the values that they gave us here. Okay, my man? Can AD be a shared side for two triangles? No. Good. Can AB... Be a shared side for two triangles. Really? Which one shares that same side? No. The small one is AD. The medium is DB. The only side that is AB is for the large triangle. Only one triangle has that side. Yes, sir. And I'll continue with you in a second. Yes, sir, my brother. Okay, but you see what I'm saying? AD can't be with the big and the small because the big side does not include AD. Thank you so much. And then I'll get to you in a second. Let me just wrap up with this on my boy here. Now, AD here, or I'm sorry, AC. Isn't AC a shared side of both the large triangle, which we encapsulated in green, And the red small triangle, which we encapsulated in red, isn't that a shared side of both? Okay. CD is a shared side of the small and the medium. But did we have a value there? No. So we couldn't use that in that case. We could also say, wait, what about CB, Moro? CB is a shared side of the large and the middle. That's fantastic, but you don't have a value for that in particular, sir. Thank you so much. You got it, my man? Yeah. Thank you, brother. Sir? It's going to be two of three, rather. Okay. It's either going to be the large and the small, the medium and the small, or the small and the medium. No, but I mean the size. The they, they're going to give you three. Sometimes they're going to mess with you and give you four, and you got to see which one relates. Okay? Excellent questions, guys. Excellent. May I continue? Okay. How about this one? Now I'm throwing it out. Now I'm throwing out some, some craziness here, right? Okay. First thing I want to do is find X. 
So in order for me to find x, guys, let's look at everything that's given here. What can I use as a shared side to find x? Just so my brother. CD, very good, son. Very good. And what are the two triangles that share CD? Yes, sir. The small and the medium. Fantastic, my man. Fantastic. So what's the proportion here, brothers? Three. The shared side. Three square root of three. Good job. And then the shared side here because the extremes, the shared sides have to be extremes. They have to cross each other over x. Very excellent. So cross multiply 3x. Remember when you cross multiply these, what's 3 times 3? What's square root of 3 times square root of 3? So 3 times 9 is? So x is 9. Okay? So x is 9. Now, I want to find the product of xy. But in order for me to find the product of xy, I need to find y. And what is y here in this case? If you take a look at this, ac is y, but that is a shared side. Very good. ac here which is represented by the variable y, is a shared side to which two triangles, guys? The small and the large. Fantastic. So what's my proportion here? Small to shared side equals shared side to 12. 12. You already know what X is. Thank you, my brother. That's what I'm doing is solving for Y. So Y squared equals 36. Square root both sides. Y equals 6. So what is the product of XY? 54. You with me here so far, guys? Take your time. Because then we're going to have to find the sum of x, y, and z. I'm going to get rid of all those colors on the triangle here in a second. Relabel things so it's a little bit neater for us to see. I, I won't mess with the work yet. But let me just go ahead and prep this. We know that y is 6. We know that x is 9. Okay, now. Now's the fun part. How on earth can I find Z? Okay, you could use a Pythagorean theorem. Good, good thinking outside the box. The, but the shared side here is Z. That's a better way. The shared side is Z. Which two triangles share CB here? The medium in red and the large in blue. Very fantastic. Like, awesome, man. I'm proud of you guys. So now, what would my uh, proportion be, my brothers? Medium to shared equals shared to, and what's the large here? 12. So z squared equals 84. When I take the square root of that, z equals, well, we know that this breaks up into 9 times 12, right? Uh, how about I learn how to multiply? 108, hello. When I square root that, that's 9 times 12. Square root of 9 is 3, we know that. 12 breaks up into 4 times 3. Square root of 4 is 2. So 2 times 3 is 6, square root of 3. That's my z. So that makes sense. So what is the sum of x plus y plus z?
Yeah. X plus Y is 15. Plus 6 square root of 3. Remember, you cannot multiply. I mean, you cannot add whole numbers with radicals. Does that make sense, gentlemen? Questions on that, gentlemen? All right, you guys rule. Hopefully this makes sense. Hopefully you learned a lot. Thank you very much, and have a wonderful day.